With the loss of major sections of the original interviews by sources and beings unknown, we return now in the summer to reshoot the lost interviews with Rowley Kilda. Rowley's books are now out of print, but here are some of them as we return to Sue. We start with an important conference in Moscow, held just before the breakup of the Soviet Union, where top U.S. military were in attendance. We are here today because certain things happened since the last interview, namely that certain information that you imparted the first time was somehow um, deleted. So could you go over that again about specifically where you went to conference in Moscow and things like that, those sort of events where you're meeting other people? Yes, it was interesting to find out what parts of the interview were deleted, which to me show that those are the parts that people should not know. Big Brother doesn't want that people know about space and real findings in space. Um, this Moscow conference was opened by General Popovich, a cosmonaut, and Dr. Ashasa was the chairman, and I did not know at that time that he was also chief of, of Navy intelligence of the Soviet Union. This standard gives UFO conferences to general public, which was incredible in my mind. At the end... So this was open to the general public yes, in Moscow as well? Yes, but we were only four from the West. They were all over from the Soviet Union at that time. And those from the West, uh, there was an American general, Army's intelligence chief, can you imagine? And his, can you name him? Uh, yes, uh, General Albert uh, Stubblebein. And his now wife, uh, psychiatrist Rima Leibov. And... Um, and uh, Victoria, who was a journalist and now married to Colonel John Alexander, who is very, very knowledgeable about space, UFOs, and mind control. And uh, at the end of the conference, I was asked if I would like to see something very specific, and I, I couldn't understand what. I said, sure, what do you want to show me? And they took me to the, uh, to the cellar of, of this institute, and it was behind so thick iron doors, several of them, three, four, I recall, and I thought, what is this? This is like going to a secret uh, vault of the bank. And there was a huge hall full of UFO pictures from all the walls, in all the walls, and then a huge map of the Soviet Union with pins. And I stopped immediately and said, what are these? They ignored my question. I thought that they could have been landing sites of, of UFOs. But anyway, what they specifically wanted me to see was a story of Anatoly Malchev. And I was so surprised because I have lectured of Anatoly Malchev in my previous lectures because this happened to him in 75. So what was, what, who is she exactly? Anatoly? Well, he was a woodworker in the woods and all of a sudden a UFO landed next to him. And humanoids came out and asked him for a ride to, to come along. And he was courageous and he went along. And then they were flying for some time, and they passed the moon. And on the other side of the moon, the dark side, so-called, of the moon, he, he saw lights. And he asked, well, what are these? So he was told there are bases on the dark side of the moon. And then they flew maybe two hours or something, and they landed on a planet. And when he got out, he got a shock of his life, because the people who came to greet him and meet him were his dead relatives and friends who were in perfect shape and, and beautiful and, uh, you know, in, in perfect health. And this was deleted. So I thought that's very interesting because that shows something about life on planet Earth. It showed to me, at least, that we're all one. ETs, the dead, which we call the dead, the energy of the dead, is not dead, but uh, uh, just continues, well, they just, and their, us. So, their souls, perhaps? Or well, you can call them. I mean, I would uh, use rather a, 
not religious term like soul, I would say energy bodies. We are light energy, beings of light. And that was there. It was not in the physical, even it looked exactly like the physical in the last reincarnation. And if somebody was blind or deaf or had an amputated arm, they were whole. Because all these are in the physical body, they are not in the light body. Your light body cannot have any defects. And that may be explains the medical um, uh, phenomena of, of a so-called phantom touch. You know, if some, somebody has amputated an, your arm, so you still feel the pain in your fingers, and you don't have physical fingers. And uh, uh, Dr. Harry Oldfield in, 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 in England or in Wales has actually shown video of if the person thinks of their arm, it, it appears. Oh, really? On, on camera. Oh. That I have never seen. Yes. But uh, there's a lot between the earth and, and, and the skies that we don't know about. So what else happened at this conference and, and were you able to debate or discuss with the, with the other people that were there? Uh, well, I discussed, I didn't debate because I don't, I don't uh, speak uh, uh, Russian and I had a, a lady, a radio engineer who was also a journalist of Anomalia magazine in Leningrad at that time and I asked her to come and sit next to me and interpret a little bit but uh, next day she just vanished and uh, like I said in the previous interview two males came next to me and one was a colonel one was a general and after that I was surveilled uh, 24 hours I'm sure but it was interesting that after all this they still asked me to come and see this hall why did they want to show it to me and I asked the American lady who was there last year in an American UFO conference did they invite you too because I was alone with them and she said no why did they invite me? So you were alone with the Russians in this room? Yes. So Stubbledine... Uh, uh, no, no, they went. They, went. they weren't brought in. And, and uh, like I found out, they were not even invited. Interesting. I think the reason may be that I had lectured of Anatoly Malchev. And of course, they know everything. Secret services uh, in the US and Russia, they know everything. So and they wanted to show me that, yeah, you're really dealing with something which is real. It's not just a story. So were you able to talk to the Americans at all? Or oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So uh, uh, with conversation, no. how were they... I did not talk about this because this was at the end of the conference yes. and, and, and we left. But how did such a senior high-ranking American uh, group be in Moscow? This is before the Soviet Union broke up. Yes, remember? it was just about breaking up. Yeah. I don't know. It was through uh, Rima Laibo I found out about this conference. So. It seems to me that Russia and U.S. have very, very much in common with the space exploration. And it's only we, uh, usual people, who don't know it because they act as if they would be, you know, confronting each other. No, they're big bells, you know, like... But more importantly, on this level of uf ufology. That's right, exactly. Because, of course, the idea in the 50s was that it could be a threat to planet Earth. Now they all know just as well Russians as, as, as Americans, that there is no threat, absolutely none. And one interesting thing was that came out of the conference that the Russians have, uh, have uh, lost many planes and pilots uh, because of uh, fightings with UFOs. And it's always we, Earth people, who attack. But of course their technology is maybe thousands of years ahead of us, so we always lose. And now it was stated there in the conference that now it's an order in Russia not to attack because we always lose and, and why should they lose their pilots and planes so they know that they better let, the, let them be alone but there, it came out also that there are of course two dimensions to the UFO question uh, a member of Soviet Academy of Sciences stated that uh, of course it's a mechanical one I mean it is a, a, a mechanical device that flies like a plane but then there is the pilots, the humanoids, and then that comes to the consciousness of the pilot and the consciousness of human beings. Now that seems to go together. And they also, which I think is one of the worst things that they don't want people to know, is time travel. They come from our future. And, and, and they can also go back. I mean, there's a technology even for us, but it has taken many, many lives when they have been doing experimentations with Monta uh, Project in the, in the States, for instance. Young children especially, they die with these, uh, these um, experiments. But uh, when you think that they come from our future, so you could also state that we see our own future. 
because a man is a mind, not a body, and, and we're multidimensional, which is uh, something which is very hard for people to understand. But, but if you think that in your dreams, you are also in another frequency, and in your dreams you can go wherever. And we think that dreams are just a product of stress or your experiences and a product of your brain activity. Because today's uh, medicine still holds on to the old paradigm that it's your brain that thinks, it's your brain that is the thing. It isn't. It's like a pro projector. Film is much more important than the projector because projector can go kaput, you know, yeah. something goes, yeah. goes wrong. So, okay, you take the film and put it into a new projector and it continues. That's exactly how a human being should be thought of. A human being is a consciousness, absolutely a consciousness, and can